In this pivot video, we're gonna look at the float logic as it relates to uh, both Pivot and Pivot Pro. This is a Pivot Pro, uh, a little bit bigger than the Pivot that we had sitting here a minute ago. Um, but I'm gonna kind of explain the, how the float logic of these floats going up and down and how the panel uh, interprets all that because it's very important for troubleshooting and to know what the expected behavior is. One of the biggest faults of most control panels is that you could have working pumps, working panels, everything is working fine except maybe one stop float goes bad and your other floats come up but the pumps can't turn on. So what we did is we, we really tried to think of all the different scenarios of floats being up and down and being in fault and, and trying to adapt so that we're, we're really having the panel prioritize running the pumps um, using whatever inputs it has to be able to run the pumps and be able to turn off the pumps but to be able to do it without short cycling pumps. So there's a, there's a lot to this logic but we'll cover some basics here and, and you, can, um, you can always study more in the installation instructions. But now normal, normal operation would be the water's rising, so the, float, the stop float comes on, then the lead float comes on, and one of the pumps turns on. And we have a duplex panel here, so you'll, it'll alternate between the two pumps. So the first time we do it, that'll turn an LED on for the, for the stop float. Now when we lift the lead float, it's, it's gonna, you'll hear the contactor pull in. Now the pump would be pumping the water out and the contactor and the pump turn off. So that's normal operation and I, I'm not looking at the panel but let's say that was pump one. The next time the water comes up and pump two cycles. So that's normal operation. But what I mentioned the scenario a second ago is if this float doesn't come on, it gets stuck or it goes bad and these floats come up, it, with old panels, your pumps don't turn on. The, the, the first time you know that there's something wrong is you get a high water alarm um, because this float, it got to this float and, and there's an alarm created for that, but the pumps don't run. So here's what happens with this panel. Stop float is stuck, lead float comes up. I'm gonna silence that alarm by pressing down on the toggle here. The pump is running. So it saw the float came up and it said, I'm gonna turn the pump on, but it gave an alarm because this float should have already been on. Now we're gonna turn off. Now notice the contactor didn't clunk and turn off. That's because we're giving it 10 seconds. So there's your 10 seconds to off. And the reason we're doing that is so that these narrow angle floats, which only need a little bit of movement to turn pumps on and off, if we didn't give that 10 seconds, the pumps would short cycle. They'd turn on and off very frequently. You'd end up burning the pumps out most likely, but that's just not a, a very efficient way to pump. So when, the, when this flashing light and the alarm are going and it calls attention to itself, and somebody comes up to this, they're gonna see a flashing stop float LED. And right here in the screen, it says fault, uh, float one in fault. Now I'm gonna clear it. You hold that down for about five seconds and it wipes out the, the alarms and puts it back to normal operating. Um, let's say both of those floats are bad. Uh, they get stuck, some, somebody unplugged them, whatever the case may be, and only high water flow. Silence it. Now the pumps are gonna run for 20 seconds instead of 10. We know we're higher up, we know we can get away with a little bit longer running cycle. Again, just to uh, prevent short cycling of the, of the float switches and of the pump, and also to pump a little more efficiently than a, than a constant on and off. So it's a 20 second runtime. It just turned off. I'm gonna clear it out. And that's, that's the basics. Now there's other things like this float could come up, this float comes up, then 
Um, this stays up, it gets stuck, and then this one goes off. And then what happens? So your panel has to be able to make all those decisions. And uh, we've, I think, come up with every scenario we can to try to accommodate or and try to turn pumps on if at all possible, but at least to give an alarm. So that, that's the quick explanation of the switch float logic for pivot so that you understand the behavior.